I already know what you're thinking. You're going to skip through to the best parts of the video and only take what you need and save yourself some time. I do that too. Everybody does that. But I'm telling you right now at the beginning of this video, you need to watch it from the beginning to the end all the way through because if you miss a single drop down box, it is going to mess up everything because I'm going to teach you the correct way to edit F-Log on Fujifilm in DaVinci Resolve and this can be done completely with the free version. So since I've asked you to watch this to completion, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So we're here in DaVinci Resolve. I am using the studio version and I am on beta 18.5. You can use this on the full release 17, 18. You can use it on the free version. All we're really doing is color space management done right, okay? So first things first, over in the bottom right corner on your project settings gear wheel, click that to open up your settings. We're now gonna go to the color management section and there's two ways to do this. You can either do DaVinci YRGB or YRGB color managed, but if you do it the color managed way, it's going to basically color, tr uh, color space transform everything automatically without doing it inside of a node. That can be very advantageous and time saving if your entire project is one type of shot using one camera and one log format, but most of us are gonna be mixing cameras and formats and all this other stuff. And so we're gonna do DaVinci YRGB. And we're gonna actually do our color management inside of the nodes. Color, the timeline color space is gonna be rec 709 gamma 2.4 that is current broadcast standard any, a standard that's going to conform to any sort of media you're going to consume on the end user side and then output color space same as timeline which is going to automatically set it to that rec 709 gamma 2.4 we're going to now come to the color page and i'm also going to give you guys a awesome shortcut on how to copy and paste this as a power grade so that you can drop it on all your Fuji F-Log files. So first things first, we're gonna do some color space transform. On the right hand side, in your effects library, search for color space transform, drag it and drop it right here. Your input color space on Fuji F-Log is not Rec. 709, it is Rec. 2020. And if you just look at Rec. 2020 versus Rec. 709, going back and forth between those two, you can already see that it does make a meaningful impact. Now our input gamma is going to be Fuji F-Log. We're already looking good because it wants to put it into a Rec. 709 just because of the color management of our timeline here. We want to go into DaVinci Wide Gamut. And we're going to do DaVinci Intermediate is our output gamut. And this is why, as you can see down here on the bottom right, Rec. 709 is a pretty tight triangle over the total available color information. And what we're doing right now is we're taking that log footage and letting it work inside a much, much larger color space because that's gonna give you a whole lot more latitude. Now let's talk about how to get it back to Rec. 709 and how do we edit this because it looks even flatter than just F-Log, that's F-Log, that's F-Log converted to DaVinci Wide Gamut, just F-Log and then DaVinci Wide Gamut again. I did Alt-S and Alt-S for two serial nodes. And our last node here, we're gonna do another color space transform. And since we took our Fuji F-Log and went to DaVinci Wide Gamut, so now anything from here forward is DaVinci Wide Gamut, our last node right here needs to take our DaVinci Wide Gamut and our DaVinci Intermediate color space and input and output it out to Rec. 709 at Gamma 2.4. And then now in any node in between these two, we are now working inside of the DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. And then before we go to delivery, it is going to retransform it back to the broadcast ready Rec. 709 standard. And now here's the question you're probably asking, why would I do this instead of doing just a Rec. 709 color space transform at the end? 
like this clip. This is just an empty node that we can edit inside of, and this is a, a correct REC 2020 Fuji F-Log to REC 709 Gamma 2.4 Color Space Transform at the end. Why would we go through all of this to open it up to DaVinci Wide Gamut instead of just going straight to REC 709? Let me show you. Look at the waveform on the right hand side. I'm going to grab this empty node that has nothing in it. And now let's, grab, let's do something very extreme. Let's pull the high of our highlights on the curves here up to the top. You see how it's squeezing it up to the top. It rolls in and out of the highlights on our waveform on the right hand side. And this translates to anything else that happens in here. It also translates to all the manipulation that you're gonna do to your colors. If we come over here to our Rec 709 version, you can see it has much less of a roll. It more or less just slams into getting blown out or crushed. And it also pulls the highlights up a lot fast. I mean, it pulls the shadows up a lot faster, chasing those highlights. It's, it's more like you're pressing the whole thing it's, it doesn't roll in and out. You go straight to clipping or being crushed much faster. You have a lot less latitude. And then whenever you do go to, let's say, let's do another node right here. And let's do something like we did a second ago, hue versus loom, grab this and bring it down. It's a much more drastic and less nuanced. And I mean, look at the way that this is already starting to fall apart. This is probably not gonna be super obvious on YouTube, but I can tell you even with minor changes, even with just the curves adjustment, I can already tell that I'm now introducing a lot more grain and artifacting versus pushing the footage just as much in that DaVinci wide gamut because it's it has so much more room to move. Let me now show you how to do this as a power grade, which is basically Think of it kind of like a LUT, except it's not a LUT. It's gonna copy and paste this entire node tree here onto any clip that you drag it on across all your projects. So I'm gonna get rid of, th this is how I have mine set up. I have mine set up as the color space transform from F-Log to DaVinci Wide Gamut, one blank node, and then the DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709 conversion at the end. Very straightforward, it's got everything I need, and then once I drop this onto a clip, I can then add my nodes, my parallel nodes, do all my other stuff that I need, but my drop-down boxes that's really time-consuming is already done with the beginning and end color space transform. Right-click on the image window right here, grab still, and now on that still, drag it over to power grades. You now have this as a power grade. I have mine named F-Log to DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709 to help me remember what this is. And so that you can see this in effect, let me go to this other clip right here with a much different color palette. This is a lot more golds and everything. We can now drag and drop this into our node tree and it does exactly what we set it up to do. DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709 conversion with the blank nodes in between for me to do all my editing. So now I can come in here and do any adjustments that I need to, add some more nodes, whatever I want to do. This is not how I would edit it, I'm just trying to show you guys. Now, as long as you work in between these two color space transform nodes, you're gonna have just a world of opportunity for F-Log in comparison to just doing your edit directly into a Rec. 709 conversion. And this is not that difficult to use. Remember, all we had to do was make sure our Timeline color management was done correctly. One input color space transform and one output color space transform. Save it as a power grade. Now you can drag it and drop it on all your projects. Let me know down below if this has helped you guys out because I have been led astray by other tutorials and it took me so long to figure this out. So I hope this helps you out. Please let me know down below. Thank you all so much and you'll have a great day.